So in order to count from 1 to 100, like I showed in the previous video, we need to learn some other assembly instructions. In this video, we will talk about the compare instruction. You can see here I have a very blank program. I'm going to hit F11, start the debugger up, Control-Alt-D. Actually, I don't even need to do that. We, we have so far been use, working with EAX, EBX, ECX, and EDX. Right, and I haven't talked about these other registers quite yet, but these are the general purpose registers on the CPU that we can use however we want, and they have uh, meaning, special meaning with other arithmetic operations as we saw with the multiply and divide instructions. Yada, yada, yada. Here is a register I haven't talked about quite yet. This is called the flags register, or E flags, if you would. The E means extended. I know I haven't really talked about the E. All of them start with E. That's nice. The E main means 32 bits, not 16 bits. I'll talk about that in more detail in another video. No big deal. This is the flags register, which indicates individual bits and their states that are set according to instructions that we give the CPU. Boy, that sounds technical. Let me see if I can break that down. Um, first of all, it's 32 bits, so I could draw 32 bits here, all right, but let's not. Let's just say I have an arbitrary number of bits, and you wanted to know whether I was sleepy, and you wanted to know whether my teeth were brushed, and you wanted to know whether my hair was combed, and various other things about me. Maybe you want to know if I'm married, or if I live in a house or an apartment, or yada, 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 that kind of thing. Well... Each individual bit represents one flag. Right? The bit's on or it's off. So, no, I am not sleepy today. Right? I had a good night's rest last night. Um, are my teeth brushed? That's like something I do. I, I probably do that before I wake up. I, I always brush my teeth. I hate having teeth that are not brushed. That drives me nuts. Now, is my hair combed? No, I was kind of lazy this morning. My hair is not combed. And so on and so forth. We could tell... Uh, various state, you know, maybe I'm married, maybe I'm not, that kind of thing. We could set these ones and zeros. And they're simple Boolean values or bits, if you would. Not not anything special there. Well, when we use these bits like this, in binary, we just simply say they're flags. All right? They're either on or off. They indicate the presence of some state or not. So, no, I'm not sleepy. Yes, my teeth are brushed. No, my hair's not combed. So that's what the flag register does. Um, there's several flags depending on various things we do in the CPU. We cannot modify the flags directly. I couldn't say move into flags the value 10 like I did with the EAX, EBX, ECX, and EDX registers. I can't do that. But I can modify those values indirectly with some other instructions. One of those instructions is the compare instruction, right? which is the purpose of what we're going to do in this video. Um, let me uh, take all that off and see if I can draw. I'm going to pause the video and try to draw a little bit better uh, lineup of bit values here. Okay, I have what I feel is a little bit better box. Now the flags register, again, is 32 bits. If you look at these hexadecimal numbers, remember that each number represents four bits or one nibble. And that's, that's the same reason we compare hex to... Binary, it's easy to convert hex to binary. If you're not familiar with that, you definitely need to be familiar with that up to this point. Go look at the hex and binary playlist if necessary to get a refresher. Anyway, there's 32 bits, and obviously I haven't drawn 32 bits up here. That's because I don't need to to discuss the two bits that I am interested in discussing in this video. Let me number these bits from the least significant bit up to the most significant bit. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5... Six, seven, eight. So you can see here I have I have a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> nine bits, uh, which is a nibble which is two point two five nibbles. Right, does that maybe I don't know if that makes sense. Let me let me see if I can illustrate that. This is our first nibble, so whatever this value of this hexadecimal number is will be represented by these four bits. Okay, the next nibble is right here. So whatever this value is, is represented by these four bits. And then I have one bit which uh, carries over into this nibble. But I'm not, I'm not too worried about that number. In fact, I'll actually erase that off. <coughs> we are interested in bits 6 and 7. The sixth bit represents the 0 bit. Okay, I'll just say 0 right here. And actually, I kind of like crossing my Z's right there. And then the seventh bit 
is the sine bit. Now, I know I haven't talked about negative numbers quite yet. We definitely will do so very soon. Um, but anyway, sine bit, zero bit. Uh, in fact, you can look at the uh, binary binary numbers playlist to see how to interpret bits as negative or positive. That's that's critical to know. Well, not too critical for right now, but you'll get the idea. The sine bit, if it's 1, that means we have a negative number. If it's 0, that means we have a positive number. Pretty straightforward. You see how these are flags? 1 bit, I can tell if my number is 0. Or not 0, I can tell if it's positive or negative. All right, 0, though, is a special value. Is that positive? Is that negative? Is it? Not? Yeah. Anyway, the 0 bit is uh, 1 if the value is 0, and 0 if the result is not 0. Wow, my head just burned up right there. I got confused there. Did you? I and I'm the guy doing the video. It's, if 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 I'm confused, well then what state are you guys in? That's that's gonna be rough. Let me let me illustrate. All right, I'm just trying to make this a little bit cleaner for your consumption. Let's uh let's go to our assembly code here. I'm going to move into EAX the value one, and then I'm going to compare to EAX the value two. And all compare does is subtracts the left operand, or subtracts the right operand from the left operand. All right, so hopefully you can see here that I am taking the value in EAX, which is 1. I am subtracting 2, and that will give us a negative 1. However, that negative 1 is not stored anywhere. It's not stored in a register. It's, it's just not stored. Okay? So what's the purpose of doing the subtraction? The purpose of the subtraction is to indirectly modify the value of the bits in the flags register, which I have down here. Specifically, the sign bit and the zero bit. Now, some other bits will change. So I'll just warn you up ahead. Don't worry about that. We'll get to those flags in later videos. The important flags to pay attention to in this video are the sign flag and the zero flag, which are the upper two bits in this nibble here, this red nibble. Well, what is the sign? Is it negative or is it positive? Well, it looks like it's very negative. So the result of this, we'll put a one right here. Yes, it's negative. Now, is it zero? Well, no, it's not zero. Okay, do you get the idea there? And then these two bits will be set. That I'm, again, I'm not covering these flags and not covering these ones. Let's let's run this program, see what happens. I'm going to hit F11, uh, oh, my debugger was turned on. Shift F5 to stop the debugger. F11, Control Alt D, bring up the disassembly window. I'm going to call do it. I know I haven't talked about call quite yet. We'll get to that in future videos. For now, I'm just saying, hey, we need to go into our assembly code at the do it location. Remember in our assembly here, we said do it right there. So, uh, assembly again, Control Alt D, F11. <coughs> Here's our move. We're changing EAX to a 1. So here's EAX. Watch it change to a 1 when I hit F11. Compare EAX to 2. Well, that's going to do the subtraction, again, giving a negative 1. But it's not going to store the result in any of these registers. However, it will change the value of this hexadecimal number, which represents these four bits. All right, we already indicated that the sign bit will go to 1. The 0 flag will go to a 0. Watch this digit right here, F11, you see we have a 9, which uh, a 9 in, in uh, hexadecimal, well, let's convert that to binary, that's going to be an 8 plus a 0 plus a 0 plus a 1. Again, I'm ignoring these two bits, but it's critical that we, we interpret the entire amount into its full nibble value. Well, look at that, we got it right. right? The sign bit is set, the 0 bit is not set. All right, very cool. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, jump ahead of me a little bit, but I'm going to do this. Hopefully uh, you'll pause the video and do this on your own and think about the result before I do it. But I'm going to change this to a 2 and change this to a 1. You do the same. Pause the video. Uh, work out what are the values of these two bits going to be. And then step through it. See if the result is what you expected. And then come back and watch me do it. Okay, let's let me do it. I'm going to change my eraser size here so I can... Erase this, erase that, so on and so forth. I probably should have kept the video paused while I was doing my erasing, huh? Um, <clears throat> all right, two minus one. Well, the result of that will be one. 
Is that a positive or negative number? Well, that's a positive number. So no, it's not negative. And is it zero? Well, it's not zero as well either. All right, let's step through this. F11, control alt D, F11. Two is in EAX, subtract one from two. Down here, pay attention. Oh, we went to zero now, indicating that all four of these bits are zero. All right, so we got that right. Very cool. Very cool. Let me, um, let, let's, let's do one more example. Let's do two minus two. All right, what, what, what do you think the result of the two bits here, the sign bit and the zero bit will be when I do a two minus two? Let's just, uh, let me, I'm going to pause the video and do some erasing. Okay, two minus two, well, that is a zero. All right, so yes, the value is zero. Now, what's the sign? Is zero positive or is it a negative number? It's kind of weird when you think about a number line. We have zero here, and then here's the positive numbers. They're out here to the right. And then the negative numbers, they just go the other way. All right, and zero, well, you can't, it's just kind of sitting there in the middle, undecided. <laughs> now, you can ask mathematicians what the definition is and that sort of thing. I honestly, I can't remember. I think they consider zero to be a positive number. I kind of think of it as in between and, and neutral, if you would. Uh, so what's the value of the sign bit going to be when we run through this? Is it going to be one, indicating negative, or is it going to be zero, indicating positive? Well, to be honest, I kind of don't care. Because <laughs> if the result's zero, that's all I'm really worried about. If the result's zero, I don't care about the sign because I know I'm on zero here. All right, which is another way of saying, hey, the two numbers are equal. All right, two is equal to two. If I compare EAX to two, now it pops to zero. That means that EAX is equal to two. All right, anyway, let's let's step through this. F11, Control Alt D, bring up the uh, disassembler. F11. Uh, EAX will change to a 2 right here, so F11, and then compare EAX with 2. Pay attention, this is the nibble that we are interested in. It's a 4. I know it didn't change to red here because nothing, it, it, didn't, it didn't change, but it did. Uh, the compare instruction did evaluate this and store the result of those two bits right here. Well, what, what's a 4? What's a 4 in, a 4 in hex? Well, let's convert that to binary. It's 0, 8, 1, 4, and then these two are zeros as well. So we got it right. The sign bit is zero, but I don't care about the sign because the result was zero. All right, anyway, hopefully you're kind of getting the gist there. So that's the compare instruction. That's also the flags register. There's several other flags we'll examine as necessary and as needed as we go along in future videos. And then uh, specifically, we looked at the sign bit, which is the seventh bit, and the zero bit, which is the sixth bit. And in the next video, I'm going to show you how to use the result of a compare to do some very interesting things.